Welcome back to the playlist on photosynthesis. In the last video, what we did is we looked and we looked at the basically the physiology of how we get reduced ferrodoxin. Okay, and we, we at least mentioned that ferrodoxin can feed into this enzyme, which is shown here, called ferrodoxin NADP plus oxidoreductase. And it can feed the electrons into this enzyme, and what this enzyme produces from NADP plus is a very special molecule, a reduced coenzyme called NADPH. And before we get into the mechanism of this enzyme and see how it works, I want to at least mention what the NADPH is for. The NADPH is going to be used to fuel something called the Calvin cycle. Without NADPH, the Calvin cycle will not be able to take place. And basically what the Calvin cycle is for is for synthesizing glucose. So it turns out that part of the strategy of making glucose from the plant's perspective is to use NADPH to do the process. Now NADPH, of course, is not actually involved in the gluconeogenic process, but in order to synthesize the 3 phosphoglycerate we're basically going to need the NADPH. Okay, so now we've got this enzyme. Let's see how it works. Okay, and like we said earlier in the last video, this enzyme requires a totally reduced ferrodoxin. And remember, ferrodoxin is an iron sulfur protein. So the iron sulfur uh, coenzyme is going to transfer its electrons ultimately through a series of amino acids that's part of this oxidoreductase, which include 3-anine-377 and isoleucine-376. So you could sort of view the electron as sort of moving around these residues, and ultimately the electron is going to be transferred onto this flavin, which happens to be flavin adenine dinucleotide FAD. So I'll draw the mechanistic steps in green, and since these are one electron transfers, I have to use fishhook arrows. So basically the electron is going to come from reduced ferrodox and sort of move along 3 and 377 and isoleucine 376. And then the electron is going to come basically and it's going to attack this carbon right here that I'm highlighting in yellow. So this carbon is going to get attacked and that's going to release these pi electrons to come out and nucleophilically attack hydronium generating water and a protonated radical FAD. Okay, so this right here, this is what we refer to as the semiquinone. This is the semiquinone radical of FAD, okay? And we've already transferred one electron onto it. We're actually going to transfer a second electron. So if you remember from the previous video, I said we're going to need two reduced ferrodoxins. Now we're going to see how we use the second one, okay? So once again, we're going to have a second reduced ferrodoxin come in. And once again, it's going to transfer the electron and sort of snake it along 3 and 377 and isoleucine 376. And then the electron is going to come over here and it's going to couple with this radical electron. And that's going to form a double bond right here. So here's the double bond that's formed in part of the FAD. But when that happens, these pi electrons have to kick up onto this nitrogen to allow for the formation of the double bond. So what we ultimately get is we get FADH minus. This is FADH minus. And so now what's going to happen is we're going to eliminate a hydride. So what we're going to see now is an elimination. This lone pair on the nitrogen is going to kick in here to form the double bond. This double bond is going to rearrange to be right here, and we're going to eliminate a hydride. And the hydride is basically going to come over here, and it's going to attack the top carbon of this NADP+. So this molecule right here, this is NADP+. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to attack that carbon at the top, and that's going to cause a double bond rearrangement where this nitrogen right here is going to act as an electron sink. And so ultimately what that does is it regenerates FAD. This is FAD in the fully oxidized form. And then, of course, we also get NADPH. And we notice that NADPH is the reduced version of the cofactor or the coenzyme. And this is basically the key structure that's characteristic of NAD. Ph. And as we said earlier, the NADPH that's used, or excuse me, that's created here is used 
ultimately in the Calvin cycle. And that's part of the mechanism about how the plant is going to synthesize the precursors to make glucose. Okay, And actually this process of ferredoxin feeding its electron into ferredoxin NADP plus oxidoreductase, this process is called non-cyclic electron flow. Okay, so it turns out that there's two kinds of electron flow in, in and around photosystem one. Okay, there's cyclic electron flow, which is not what we described here, and there's non-cyclic electron flow. Non-cyclic electron flow means that the ferredoxin fed its electrons into this enzyme. But it turns out that under certain conditions, ferredoxin can actually feed its electron back into cytochrome B6F. Okay, that process is called uh, cyclic electron flow, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. Okay, um, and after that, we're going to talk about the Calvin cycle. But what I want to do also in this video is give you a little bit of background information on this enzyme. Okay, this enzyme, ferredoxin NADP plus oxidoreductase, can exist basically in two forms. Number one, it can exist bound bound to the thylakoid membrane, okay, so it can exist in that form, or it can exist free in the stroma, okay, of the thylakoid, okay, and when it is bound to the thylakoid membrane, it basically exists as a dimer, uh, possibly due to stabilization needs, and when it's free in the stroma, it exists as a monomer, okay, and it turns out that there's actually some regulation on whether it's going to be in the stroma or bound to the thylakoid membrane, it turns out that um, when it's light out, so when it's light, so when these reactions are taking place, thus the light reactions, this enzyme dissociates from the thylakoid membrane and exists free in the stroma. And it turns out that when it's in the stroma, it's most active under alkaline conditions. And if you think about it, that actually makes sense. Remember that the cytochrome B6F complex was pumping protons from the stroma into the lumen. So that makes the stroma more alkaline, meaning it has a higher pH. So basically when these light reactions are taking place, the cytochrome B6F complex is very active, pumping protons from the stroma into the lumen. So when the light reactions are taking place, the stroma ends up getting a very high pH. And it turns out that whenever, uh, whenever the, uh, this enzyme is in its monomeric form, it's more active under alkaline conditions. And that's part of the genius as to why um, it exists as a monomeric form dissociated from the thylakoid membrane during light reactions when there is light and the stroma has a high pH. However, when the light reactions are not taking place when you're in the dark, the pH of the stroma actually drops, not becoming too terribly acidic, but keep in mind that the cytochrome B6F complex is not very active whenever it's dark out. And so whenever the cytochrome B6F complex starts to shut down, this enzyme, ferredoxin NADP plus oxidoreductase, then becomes a dimer and dimerizes as being attached to the thylakoid membrane. And part of that is just due to stabilization of the enzyme, the need for that. So hopefully this, this process makes a little bit of sense. Um, we've seen now the mechanism of how ferredoxin leads to the production of NADPH through this, through this enzyme, ferredoxin NADP plus oxidoreductase. So in the next video, we're actually going to talk about the differences between cyclic and non-cyclic electron flow, and then we're going to actually go into the Calvin cycle. See you in the next video.